This video is a new update on the stock portfolio and also the ETF portfolio. It has been a while since we provided an update on our stock portfolio, and I hope this video will offer you more inspiration. It's just about starting. It has been a while since I bought a new house, and it was under renovation in the past few months. That's why you will see backgrounds like this more often, and I think that's what it's all about. Why are you going to invest? Investing itself is just a game. I hope you understand that, I hope you can put it into perspective that it's not all that important, but money is at stake, and of course, no one wants to lose money. It remains a sensitive topic. Now, in the setup of your portfolio, your personality actually comes through. And actually, the most important thing is just to start, and preferably you should begin with lower risk. For example, with diversification in the ETF portfolio. And if you have more knowledge about it and you have an affinity for it and you are also willing to do more research, then you can invest in stocks, but that is not necessary at all. The primary goal is to achieve return. And why? You use return to perhaps become financially free or to create a bit more financial freedom to do what you love to do. And you don't have to make many concessions in life for that. I think the only concession you might want to make for yourself is to refrain from materialism. Instead of not pursuing an expensive car or perhaps a wonderfully expensive house, you can invest money in experiences and in freedom. So by working less, because you can live off a portion of return or dividend, depending on your strategy. Now, as I already mentioned, here in the background, I have moved. My house is really not very expensive. It's not cheap, but it's also not super expensive. And my portfolio just keeps growing. But I definitely do it all in a balanced way. I will never borrow excessively. I have always saved a large part of my income. And although I am now working less and less, my income continues to grow and grow simply thanks to a significant portion of invested capital and the return that is just becoming more substantial. And that is actually what you want to create. I started when I was 23. And at that time, I really only had a few hundred euros per month. I also made a lot of mistakes in the past 10 years. I started with the classic mistake, which is striving to achieve a very high return. But if I had started as a beginner just with ETFs, preferably a diversified ETF portfolio, and I would have taken 10 years to learn more about stocks, then I think I would have achieved a much better return. On the other hand, it was of course also an investment in myself. However, you really need to have an affinity for it. I grew up with a father who was an entrepreneur. There are many entrepreneurs in my family. I think it runs a bit in my blood. Of course, in parentheses, because uh, DNA and entrepreneurship, in my opinion, there is no relationship between them. However, I do have a lot of affinity as well as intuition and insight into entrepreneurship. And you really need that if you want to start investing in stocks. But all of that is not necessary, of course. We are going to look at the portfolio update. Don't forget, I invest in stocks, often with a higher risk profile. I am still young, have time for long-term investment. I can afford my mistakes, but for you, that might be very different. So. Always try to translate everything, what you see and what you read into yourself. Who are you as a person? Do you have someone who is not very interested in high risk and high volatility? Then opt for more certainty. And much more importantly, if you are not willing to do a lot of research, just do not invest in stocks. Keep it simple with an ETF. We also have a free book on our website, a stock book with our methodology, but also an ETF book with three ready-made ETF portfolios that you can simply copy. I ask nothing for it at all. The only motivation for making videos is simply to share more inspiration for financial freedom because I believe that you can do a lot of things yourself and you don't need to spend a lot of money on very expensive investment funds or other matters. At Happy Investors, we also offer subscriptions, one very expensive option, but you get everything that actually has a payback period of two years. I would dare to say that, but we also offer very cheap relatively inexpensive services for 99 euros per year, I can assure you, you will easily get that out in a year's time. And that is just pure logic. Invest in things that yield more, but the best investment is in yourself. Read books, watch free videos, whatever it takes. Just start in your own way and preferably with low risk. So let's take a look now at the portfolio update, both at Giro Interactive Brokers and some other things I would like to share with you. Let's begin with a brief update on my account at Interactive Brokers. This is a business account, an investment account from my holding. Coincidentally, it also shows holdings. And I have already made a video about that once before, explaining how and what. Now, not much has happened in the past month. You see a small percentage increase. 
What I actually want to mention is what I have indicated several times since the summer, that my cash position is still very high. In this case, it concerns a cash position of around 60%. Normally, you would want to have your entire capital invested. But in my case, I have invested enough assets to continue working towards my financial freedom. And this gives me the opportunity to use this cash position in case the stock market crashes. Yes, then I can of course buy in at a very low price. And that might not increase my long-term potential in terms of absolute return, but it would at least maintain my chance of financial freedom and possibly secure that in a very good year. Even more than that. And simply because it doesn't need to be more. No cash position. In most cases, you just don't want to time the market too much and you just want to keep investing. But if you have a lot more money and a larger cash position, when a correction occurs, you can really benefit from it. In addition to this cash position, I also have cash in my personal assets, but fortunately, my DeGiro account continues to grow successfully. Since the summer, there has been no spectacular update. However, a large position has been taken. In fact, it is now my largest position to date in one stock in one company. I would not advise this for beginner investors. I also invest relatively smaller amounts in small companies. I'm not saying this is the most optimal strategy. It's just that it fits well with my personality. I enjoy investing in relatively riskier, smaller companies. Why? Because if you do a lot of research on small companies, then the competition is lower. This means you have a greater chance of discovering any gems that not everyone has found yet. Moreover, many investment funds have minimum criteria regarding market size, so they are not allowed to invest in those small companies. So the upward potential is greater, but much more importantly as an entrepreneur, I understand very well that it goes with peaks and valleys. And if you look closely at the earning model, you can identify scalable companies earlier than others. Unfortunately, this also comes with significant volatility. Here you see, for example, Advice Lab Solutions, which is the serial acquirer. We won't be discussing that today, but it is down 10% in one day. Apparently it has presented poor figures, which doesn't concern me. However, I have consciously taken a smaller position. However, my largest position is doing very well. And that's why I also have a relatively good day, at least in terms of return. And that is evolution. Evolution, I have already made another analysis about that. In fact, two, and this is my largest position. Note, I am not saying to copy this, absolutely not. You need to do your own research on the company. You should definitely be very critical of everything I say, Kao. It is currently the largest position in my portfolio, 20K, and it has a very good day because it is presenting good numbers. I entered a bit earlier this summer. At that time, it was just starting to decline a little, but these quarterly figures can at least set the upward trend in motion. I think evolution is very interesting for the long term. Also, check out the diesel on our YouTube channel. Follow us, appreciate your like on this video. We ask nothing in return. Apparently it helps with the algorithm, so thank you for that. Now, we won't be discussing evolution any further. Another stock I wanna talk about is a recent position bought in Alphen. But first, let me go over the transactions from last month. Then we can see that I bought a very small amount of Alphen and I bought a little more of Nesty. Now, both companies, Alphen and Nesty, are capital intensive. And this is actually not the type of company that you would want to invest in according to Warren Buffett. You actually want to invest in companies that are not capital intensive. Evolution is an example of that. He does not need a lot of cash to reinvest in his operations to continue growing. So a capital intensive business simply means companies with a revenue model that require a lot of capital. And then you have to think about production, factories, and yes, actually mainly that and large expensive machines. Both Alphen and Neste are in this category, but I am convinced, though that is my strong belief, and I will certainly look into it, that both companies have future potential and are currently valued so cheaply that in my opinion, they are undervalued. It may take a long time before they achieve good return. Lester pays a high dividend, while Alphen is currently struggling. As I mentioned, I also bought a little more of Evolution. And I bought a very small amount more in Parseguro. Yes, I don't quite understand why this stock is dropping so much right now. But as I said, in the short term, small companies are volatile. You need to think long term when investing in that kind of companies. At least, if you are a long term investor. And Parseguro really has potential, but I don't want to invest too much money in it. Right now, the stock is down 30% for me. So that's not great. As I already said, 
Market timing is difficult, but I think I bought at a good value, and now it is undervalued. Should I actually invest double, maybe even triple the amount, but I want to limit risk? I have already explained why. For me, maintaining financial freedom is more important than achieving the highest possible return, and that is why I choose these kinds of strategies and choices. You see a development of 10K tankers. I haven't done anything with this myself, though. I've held this position for a long time. The return has increased significantly. By the way, shipping stocks are now starting to decline significantly again. However, this is just a transition within the trading platform itself. It has likely converted stocks with a different ISM code. As you can see here, Alphen. Why Alphen? I have taken a position of about 5%. That is actually quite on the higher side. For a very long time, I have ignored this company because I believed it was overvalued. This has also proven to be the case. However, several interesting factors are now coming together. And that is also one of the reasons why Alphen is actually just plummeting. I bought based on the quarterly figures from last summer, apparently a bit too early. At that time, it had dropped by 50% and then I bought afterwards. Furthermore, the price has continued to decline, but recently it has risen slightly. So today it's up 8%, though I don't know the exact reason. However, Alphen has a lot of potential. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there are a few things I want to emphasize for this video. Alphen, if you go to the investor relations of Alphen and then the news, you will find a whole story about the market update. Very interesting, because there are several factors coming together that are not favorable for this company. First of all, actually macroeconomic conditions, but also the cyclical movement of this industry. And then there are also some problems with the loans they have and temporarily worse real estate in terms of profit. However, the net working capital is still 140 million and the market value of the company is 270 million. Well, I think, yes, that is still above book value. Well, that's true. What I want to emphasize is that when you read the annual reports, they have three. This is a very important part of the economy. Smart grid solutions have EV, let pole solutions. Well, that IV charging with the whole IV movement, that is a clearly cyclical one. The transformers continue to grow as you can see. It's not easy to see, but the revenue is around 170 million. The EV charging was actually why Alphen was so popular among the Dutch. You also see significant growth from 2021 to 2022, but it declined in 2023 and 2024. What I find really interesting is energy storage systems. They actually just make a kind of containers and they make it white label. So for different companies, and these are just very large batteries for storing energy. And of course, they also have connections with their charging stations and transformers. So they create a sort of ecosystem out of it. Very interesting. And if you just look at this graph of energy systems, so everyone understands the logic that energy and electricity will only become more important in the next five to 10 years. You have artificial intelligence and data centers that consume an enormous amount of energy. It's truly unprecedented. There simply isn't enough to generate that energy. Then there's also the need for oil and such things, but that's a different topic. But something needs to happen with that energy and energy storage makes a lot of sense to me. Then you see a huge growth curve and also in 2024, you don't see those figures here yet because this is an annual report. But even in 2024, a growth curve exists in Alphen's energy storage systems. And then you see a revenue here of 160, let's say for 2024, that the revenue might be 180. That means a revenue of 180 million. The market value is 270 million. So you are paying about just for convenience, the market value is actually twice the sales. So the price to sales ratio is two for a very, I think, potentially growing industry. And then you essentially get two more things to consider. Either the transformer business, which is steadily growing, does not have a very high profit margin, but it does grow steadily and generates profit. And you also get the upside potential of their charging stations with a huge network in Europe, which I believe is currently in a cyclical downturn. I think that is a very important point. I think that is a very important point. I think that is a very important point. Something must be done for the future and the government will intervene anyway because we are not going to meet those CO2 targets. So something needs to happen. And electricity is still always better than oil, no matter how you look at it, in terms of sustainability and not in terms of energy efficiency. So you actually just get two free businesses along with a potentially good business. And if Alphen only had that energy storage system 
and it showed these kinds of good figures, even if they were then unprofitable, investors would be much more interested in Alfin. So everything revolves around the right context and perspective. And also, it is important to outline the perspective correctly. Alfin in 2022 was overvalued, but the price is currently at the same level as around 2019, while Alfin has grown larger five years later. Management is still, at least the CEO, still at a high level. They have gained more experience, they have built a new headquarters, but more importantly, a new production facility for expansion. Well, they are going to lay off some staff. Apparently, they are opting for short-term security rather than aiming for maximum growth. That could be a choice. It's not up to me to judge, but I think that 270 million for Alfin. If I had 270 million and I could buy that company, I'm not saying I would do it, but I think that in terms of long-term potential over five to 10 years, I would be paying quite good prices now. And you can of course just specify that a bit more concretely. You have the revenue growth that you can see. You can use Yahoo Finance, it's free. You also see that the revenue keeps growing. However, at this moment, the EBITDA margin is relatively low at 5.5%. So the EBITDA margin has decreased. It was estimated at around 50 million, but this is not correct. The latest half year figures were 13 million. Let's say for convenience that it's 25 million. So you are paying about an EBITDA versus market capitalization, a market value of 10. And to put it correctly, you should also actually maintain the enterprise value. So that is market value plus debt. Then you get enterprise value divided by EBITDA of 10. But this is in a situation where the company is doing extremely poorly. So if there is a temporary market upturn and the market is doing better again, you might actually pay around five or even less times EBITDA and that is a very good ratio, for example, in private equity. So Alfin really has potential. I bought it too early. Yes, that's a shame. What's going on? This seems very painful, minus 2000, but I'm not worried at all. I bought Alfin for the long term. I am not saying that this is the best company. It has a capital intensive business model. It also has many disadvantages. It is in a distressed business. The uncertainty is perhaps, or the future is perhaps somewhat uncertain. It will all be like that, but I do believe in it. And I think that might be the most important thing. You have to believe in it. If you are going to take long-term positions, you need to believe in it. And you should actually dare to buy more when it drops further. So that's what I do as well. I've already shown that. I keep buying more and I just continue to slowly buy a little bit more each time. But I am cautious because I don't want to have too much money invested in alpha. Actually, that 5% of my total is a bit of a maximum, considering also the characteristics of the earning model. Finally, another stock in which I have 5% is Neste. Neste is also very interesting. Maybe I should save that for another video in detail. Only Neste, the company from Finland, is actually the leader in renewable diesel. Hi. This is different from biodiesel. Renewable diesel is a different ball game than biodiesel. And that is also a very important point. In the Netherlands, they are starting a very large project in Rotterdam. And that project is mainly focused on producing SAV, which stands for Sustainable Aviation Fuel. And really very interesting indeed. By the way, the forecasting from Alphen is fascinating and interesting. I forgot to mention it, but I don't feel like re-recording the video. I'll just show it quickly. Even if you buy now and the forecasting comes true, you could achieve a high return with a PI of 15. But that's beside the point. Let's take a look at Neste. Because Neste has also dropped significantly, it is actually a company that is said to be in a strong cyclical downward trend. Nest is actually just a little bit in trouble at the moment, but I think that has more to do with the macro economy and less with what the company is doing. For example, they are producing that SAV, which is renewable diesel for airplanes. And very interesting, the government simply requires airlines to become more sustainable. And they are actually being forced into a kind of necessity they have to start spending money on solutions to reduce their CO2. One of those very pragmatic solutions to do this quickly in the short term is to replace part of the kerosene with renewable diesel. Nest is simply the leader in producing renewable diesel for airplanes. But I think that's SAF, which is currently still a relatively small percentage of their total production, has the potential to become a very large profitable business for Neste. They recently also announced a very large factory in Singapore worth 1.6 or 1.9 billion. In Rotterdam, one is planned for 1.6 billion, 
They have invested in a very large factory in Finland. I was almost right. A transition from the factory. So they are spending a lot of money at this moment. On one hand, less money will eventually come in. So, of course, the figures are very unfavorable in the short term, you could say. But I believe the future potential of this company is very interesting. Analysts estimate the EPS growth, as you can see on the screen below, to be quite impressive. Even if we maintain a price-to-earnings ratio of 15, Nestle could potentially achieve an annual return of just over 30% at this moment until 2026. If you want to maintain the normal multiple on a five-year average of 18, then you have a potential annual return of 50%, 70% all hooya. But there are many uncertainties in investing. What I also don't find very great is that the current CEOs have left. But two years or so, I know that it wasn't really spectacular either. But I don't think the new CEO is particularly noteworthy. They are someone with a lot of experience within the company. Sure, you would actually prefer to have a top performer in management. I cannot judge well whether this person is that, but I have done a check on his past. And that is a very important point, because the initial excitement surrounding renewable energy, including solar and wind power, has notably decreased. This decline in enthusiasm can be attributed to several factors, such as technological hurdles, economic challenges, and the slow pace of policy changes. Recognizing these issues is essential for future energy strategies and development. The business is currently at the bottom of the cyclical downturn. That is my conviction. You should start buying when companies are in trouble in the short term, but have long-term potential. Very important about nests is that they yield a 6% return. So my stocks are not doing well. I also bought nests since the summer, I think. So actually, these are three recent positions. But a dividend of 6 to 7% is nice. I have already received my first dividend payment of 400. Of course, 25% tax will be deducted from that. What I just don't understand is that the profit loss is temporarily at minus 1200 and here you see the actual profit loss including dividends which stands at 1000 so somewhere i have lost 100 euros but where exactly no idea i think that nests are very interesting for the long term i want to leave it at that for now otherwise i will keep talking too much as i mentioned at the beginning of the video it's about achieving financial freedom investing is just fun if you have an interest in it but you don't have to do all of this you can also take lower risk and invest in ETFs to aim for an average return, which is perfectly fine. And then there is hardly any need to look at it. You can simply take the time each month to buy more ETFs. Yes, that is much less time intensive and you can just continue with the things that you find interesting. And my passion slash hobby is really investing in companies. I try to find potentially undervalued companies. And fortunately, after 10 years, I have the experience to deal with this kind of price volatility. A company that is down 30% or 20%, resulting in a paper loss of a few thousand euros. That's not nice. As a beginner investor, you probably can't handle that. That's okay. If you want, you can learn all of that. So remember, investing is also just a journey to learn. And you should do what you enjoy. You don't have to take the risk. This is about stocks. You can also invest in ETF portfolios. This was the portfolio update, interactive brokers, the Giro. I also have a kind of venture capitalist investment myself. I might share a bit about it later. And for next year, I have some exciting developments as well. As for investing, so definitely keep on following our channel because I will share everything openly and honestly with you just for inspiration. Maybe you even have feedback for me. Feel free. I don't really care what other people think of me anyway, but I love to learn. So from you as well. Thank you for watching and see you next time.